Hey, I'm Matt. Today I want to review this rigid oscillating spindle sander. This is one of those tools you had no idea how much you're going to use it until you actually get it in the shop. I got this about two weeks ago and I can't stop using it. I'm using it for all kinds of stuff, especially sanding profiles, curves and circles and all kinds of stuff. This thing is extremely useful and more importantly, it doesn't take up a lot of space and it's only about 40 pounds. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. I'm gonna go over the features with you, show you how to use it, and tell you why you need it in your shop. Hey, this video is brought to you by 731woodworks.com. Check out our online store where we have build plans, templates, and products available for you to choose from. If you buy from there, that directly supports us and helps us make videos like this. I love that this thing has onboard storage. However, I'm gonna be building, I think I'm gonna build a flip cart, so the storage is gonna go away for me on here. But if you're leaving it on a bench top, then the storage is going to be awesome for you. It's it's convenient and easy to change these spindles out. You just loosen up the nut on top and these slide right on there and tighten it back down. And these washers are actually spacers that go on the plate up top to keep any big debris from going down into the dust collection. Your power switch is here, flips up on and pushes down for off. You can actually take this piece out and basically lock it out so that you know kids or something can't turn it on. The table is adjustable, just a little rubber knob there, and then you can adjust from zero degrees down to 45 degrees. What that allow you to do is actually use the table and run it up to the sander, and you can get a 45 degree chamfer on the edges, things like that. It also has handles on each side to pick it up. I think it weighs about 40 pounds or so, so it's not heavy. On the back, you got your dust collection port, and then you also have storage for the belt sander when it's not in use. It just sets right on there, it's not going anywhere. Good to go. So this is the lock nut on top. It's actually reverse threaded. So instead of righty tighty lefty loosey, you're gonna go lefty, lefty tighty righty loosey. <laughs> and so you just unscrew this, spindle comes right off. You've got the washer that holds it in and you can store that down below. And if you wanted to put on the next one, like that. For the big two inch spindle, you're gonna swap out the keepers down in there, the washers, spacers, whatever you wanna call them. You'll put the bigger spacer in place and then slide that on there. That closes the gap is what that does. Cause you wouldn't wanna use that with say the three quarter inch. Cause then you're gonna have a giant gap there. And when you're trying to sand something, it could actually get hung in there or drop big pieces down in there. It does come with this work stop and it has this very similar style rubber coated nut to go on there. That work stop will allow you, kind of give you a, a fence to, to work against. It's especially useful with the belt sander. I don't use it on the spindle. I haven't used it yet, but it's available if you need it. This plate comes out as well. You can see the dust down in there. The dust collector, we'll talk about the dust collection in a few minutes. It's not the greatest, but it's not terrible either. Hey, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. So if you want to use the belt sander, you're gonna take this piece out. It'll store around back for safekeeping. That way you don't lose anything. This piece on the end actually is a, basically a guide and it'll fit into that track. You'll use the same nut to tighten it down. And you're ready to go. Now there's been a couple of complaints or issues with this thing getting kind of locked on there. And I actually had it happen too while using the belt sander. Some people make, there's 3D printed little wrenches that'll fit this, or you can make your own. And I just used a pair of channel locks and got it off. Now, one of the reasons you may wanna go with the Rigid over the win is that Rigid has a lifetime service agreement if you register it. That's a pretty big deal to me. That, that's one of the main reasons that keeps me with the Rigid lineup. I've got a bunch of cordless Rigid tools and that's what sold me on them to begin with was because the batteries had lifetime warranties more than anything. I didn't personally buy this. This was another gift for the channel. And I would like to thank my brother in Christ for donating this to me. Thank you. Let me show you what this will do. If we're sanding a mallet down, I've got this roughed out. You can see the lines here, especially these finger indentions or curves. And then there's a profile here that I'm gonna wanna try to sand up to. This is the exact reason why you would want a spindle sander is to help sand stuff like this or curves like on a stove cover, or if you make circles like rings, bigger rings, wood rings, you could actually set it over the spindle and get in there like that. 
So before you use this oscillating spindle sander, be sure you've got some safety glasses because that thing's spinning pretty fast, even if it's the spindle or the belt, and it, stuff does fly off of there sometimes, little pieces of wood, things like that. And then also get you a good dust mask. This is an RZ mask. Uh, you've seen them on the channel before. I use them a lot and I recommend them. There's links in the description to all this stuff. There's just good solid dust mask, replaceable filter. Uh, you just want that because this thing actually kicks up quite a bit of fine dust. So protect yourself. Let's, let's turn it on and show you. So I had these spare parts laying around. I couldn't figure out where they went. This is the bottom of the machine. I should have read the directions. So probably pretty bad at doing that but they just go right in there and the rubber feet <laughs> keeps it from sliding around on your workbench. I should have done that when I pulled it out of the box, you big dummy. Now I wanna show you how much dust this thing makes on the belt sander. The dust collection is not good. When we put on the spindle, you'll be able to see that it collects the dust much better. You can see even with the dust collection on my shop vac, we still got quite a bit of dust and I didn't really even sand that much, but this is a very aggressive belt. One thing I failed to mention was the belt will track on you up or down. It may come try to come off or try to go down into the spindle sander. The way you adjust that is this little knob right here, plus or minus, and when it's on, let me turn it on and I'll show you. It's going down. The other way, pushes it up. And that's just how you adjust that. If you want to change this belt for any reason, flip switch up there, flips up, and then you'll be able to take this belt off easily and put a new one back on and then tighten it back. Put a spindle on there and I'll show you where I use it the most is with a spindle. This is where the spindle sander comes in awesome because I'll be able to sand all of this. You'll see up to that line, check this out. As you can see, very little dust actually on top. As far as the spindle goes on the dust collection, it works pretty well. I used to spend so much time on these things trying to get this profile sanded nice with all the tool marks gone because I cut it out with a jigsaw and to get this little part here where it's kind of rounded over looking. You see right here on this edge where I rounded over earlier, I mean, it's just, it's super fast. And right here, for this, I could have used this so many times. There's tool marks in there. A little bit of roughness on the bottom. I've never sanded the inside of this one. Watch this. That took maybe 30, 45 seconds. And now we've got perfectly smooth inside there. And I didn't even really try hard. I just rushed it through there. Spindle center, man, I'm telling you. So if any of you have a CNC, you know that these templates like this, you put tabs on there so that they don't move after they're cut out. Well, then you go back and cut those tabs out. Well, then you, once you cut them out, you've got these little pieces like this that stick off. I was trying to hand sand those or sand them down with the orbital sander. It takes me about 15 seconds per template to sand those little keeps off. I mean, it speeds up the production process an insane amount. I'm telling you, this thing is well worth the money. 110 volt. Plugs into most any American outlet. The most of the housing is plastic on the bottom. This top is aluminum, but for the most part, the whole thing's plastic, except for probably the motor and the top, which the motor is probably where you're getting the heft at on the 40 pounds. What I don't like, dust collection could be improved, especially with the belt sander. I've seen people rig up some type of collection on this side of it that actually pulls the dust in. I, I could see that where that would be beneficial. That's, I mean, it's minor, but it could be improved. Maybe include a wrench that fits this thing because it does get jammed on top sometimes. But for the most part, everything else I like about it, I've had it for a few weeks now, probably two and a half, three weeks, and I've used it, I don't know, four or five times a week, constantly. I've been making a bunch of those mallet templates and also mallets on that mallet video. If you go watch that, you see where I sanded those down. This thing just makes everything easier when you're sanding. Can you do this with an orbital sander? Kind of. I made tons of these with an orbital sander. It can be done. I could have saved a lot more time if had I had one of these. All in all, I highly recommend this or the Win. I think they're made very similar. This has the lifetime warranty. That's probably why I would recommend this one over the Win but I have wind uh, bandsaw and a wind drill press that I like a lot. So they make good tools. I'm sure they carry a fairly decent warranty. Check them out on Amazon. I'll link them in the description.
As far as I know, don't quote me on this, but I think you buy these, any rigid tool from Home Depot is where you can get the lifetime service agreement on Rigid's website. You have to actually go and register the serial number, the whole nine yards and just get it registered so that if anything happens, you get yours replaced. Is this a must have tool? It depends on what you're doing. If you sand a lot, especially trying to make roundovers or curves or profiles or inside circles, anything like that, this is a must in the shop. If you're not doing that stuff, then you're probably not gonna use this very much. Hey, if you like this tool review, you need to check out the Wind Bandsaw review I did a few weeks ago right there. Click that box, get you that big old virtual fist bump. Another one of my favorite tool reviews right there. Go check them out. Thank you for watching.